What's going on everyone? Today we're taking a look at the Inspire IC 1.5 spin bike. I think it's a really great option for an indoor bike with magnetic resistance and for those who value build quality over included electronics. As per usual, we'll perform a super quick unbox, assemble it, demo it out, and then draw some conclusions. It comes very well packaged, so well that I had some difficulty getting it out. Every component is shrink wrapped and retained by its own relief in the protective foam. The frame itself is actually pretty heavy and without anything attached is awkward to move about. The manufacturer nicely provides all required hardware and tools necessary for assembly in a numbered blister pack. This makes following the instructions very easy. We start by bolting on the two base pieces that run perpendicular to the frame. Each one is secured by an Allen head fastener. The handle and tablet holder assembly is snapped into place and then tightened down with a couple more bolts. Then, a little cover is snapped over them simply to provide clean aesthetics. The actual tablet clamp is held on by two more Allen heads. Watch your orientation here, I installed upside down the first time with the spring tension bit being placed down. Each pedal is assigned a side and they do matter. They are threaded oppositely. If you were to force the right pedal on the left side of the bike, you'd likely produce some cross threading. The included pedals feel quite cheap and I replace them with some aftermarket flats almost immediately. I'm guessing the manufacturer assumes many will do this as well so they only included a good enough pair. The threads are an industry standard 9 16th thread. The seat height is adjustable with a spring loaded knob and each position is numbered. This is really handy if two or more people plan to use this bike as one only needs to remember their number. The handle height is adjusted in the same way and is also numbered for convenience. My first little test ride on the machine left me with a very positive impression of the bike. It's solid and is very smooth while pedaling. Once assembled, moving it along a smooth surface is easy as the included wheels engage when the unit is tilted forward. On carpet, this might prove more difficult. Overall build quality is excellent. Welds look clean and the whole bike is covered in a matte black powder coat. It looks as though it would be right at home in a commercial gym setting. The first problem I had came when I installed the battery and attempted to connect an app. Basically, nothing happened. After a quick phone call with support and then some follow-up emails, they diagnosed my unit as having a bad control board, which they offered to replace. After it arrived, I did have to perform a little surgery. I found this mildly annoying as the product was brand new, but also understandable as problems do happen. Customer service was very responsive, but shipping was slow, taking about three weeks. They attributed the delay to COVID-19, the common scapegoat for all problems for all companies. After the new board was installed, I was able to connect via the Inspire Fitness app. I know this particular program is not well reviewed in the iOS app store, but I found that it provides the basic functionality of displaying speed, cadence, resistance, and output adequately. The actual Inspire classes, which are included for a year for free, are okay, but definitely a knockoff of Peloton with B-Squad instructors and C-Squad producers. I personally just use my Peloton digital membership in conjunction with the Bikes app for output data. Unlike Peloton bikes, which use a resistance range of 0 to 100, the Inspire IC 1.5 uses 0 through 40. So during class, I just quickly divide whatever the instructor calls out by two and call that close enough. Now many people will want to use this bike in conjunction with other training apps like Zwift, Strava, or even Peloton directly, and unfortunately out of the box that really isn't a possibility. This product only talks to their app. I think that Inspire really made a mistake when they decided to include a proprietary set of sensors. 
However, there is a workaround and it's the same solution many non-electronic spin bike users have been using for years and that is to add a set of third-party speed and cadence sensors. To demonstrate, I've got these from Wahoo. I'll place a link to them as well as the bike itself below. It's an associate link for which the channel will earn a small commission. Use is greatly appreciated. I started by zip tying the cadence sensor to one of the cranks and attaching the speed sensor to the flywheel with the included double sided 3M VHB mounting tape. Pairing with Zwift works, but only okay. We are able to get good cadence data as the sensor just is measuring revolutions of the pedal, however speed data is not exactly accurate as the bike's flywheel is 16.5 inches in diameter while the smallest Zwift allows one to select is 20. The Wahoo Cadence sensor also works in the Peloton iOS app for my iPad, allowing in-class cadence to be displayed. Finally, using the Wahoo sensors in combination with the Wahoo app, we're also able to get our rides to sync up to Strava. Overall, I think this is a very well-constructed piece of fitness equipment that comes standard with subpar electronics. I've ridden Peloton branded bikes, and although the Inspire IC 1.5 doesn't feel quite as nice, it's up there. One can definitely see that the manufacturer took quite a bit of design um, inspiration from the more expensive alternative. I think the bottom line is that if you're okay with slightly wonky app integrations, this bike is a great buy. If you're looking for a flawless Peloton or Zwift experience, look elsewhere. Okay, that's all I had for today. Any questions, drop them below. Take care.